This one's set up a little bit different than the last one. I'm standing in the middle of a wiped treatment. Okay, so what you're standing in right up here is actually the unmowed portion and behind me is going to be the mode portion of each plot to the flag, okay? So what you see behind that, ignore, because it's different treatments than what I'm talking about right here. Okay, so I should be standing in the 17.5% glyphosate one direction. I'm gonna try to do this from memory best I can. Okay, so this is non-mode in front of me, mode behind me. See, see the dramatic difference again this was done probably in early September and grazing pressure out here is pretty low so it was really hard to get height differential back here okay so then the next plot should be 35 and a half percent 35 percent 35 percent glyphosate one direction yeah. okay so this is where we started to know some patterns in, in this treatment. Um, does everybody see the distinct lines? Yeah, it looks yeah. like a road was it, planted. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it was planted, right? All right, so we didn't figure this out until this spring. Um, we went out to do some demonstration plots on the levees for the water management district. And we're pushing the button to wet the roller, we're pushing the button to wet the roller, and nothing's happening. And then we finally start to see some streaks show up on the roller. Like, oh boy, this thing's plugged somewhere. So we took the cover off, and I didn't know what type of nozzles were under there because I hadn't really looked at it yet, but it was like little micro jets under there. And each one of those micro jets was plugged. So we had to take all those off, clean them out, and then put them back on. And we were out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, on the levees down close south of uh, South Bay. So we figured out then that's the reason we have these streaks. So we, we got to make sure that we uh, clean out that system pretty well after we're done. Otherwise, it's going to be plugged and we have a mess in our hands. So that was something we learned you know, this past year with using the wiper. All right, so one, one direction, 35% glyphosate, unmode, mode behind me. Okay. Next one should be 70% glyphosate, one direction. Unmode, mode behind me. Okay? So, when you start thinking about the questions that were asked earlier, can we increase the concentration and get away with one wiping? I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, you, you guys are the ones that are going to be the end users. Would you be happy with this? No. You need two wipes, right? Okay. So now we should be at 17 and a half percent. I'll wipe them. 17 and a half percent, two directions. Unmowed, mowed behind me. Okay. Looks definitely a lot better, two directions versus one. Thirty-five percent, two directions. I'm mode in mode. Okay, and that's seventy percent. Two directions. Yeah. You can see our problem was getting worse with our equipment over time. Okay. So we did use two different wipers. So one was always for glyphosate and the other one is always for hexazinum. Just so you know that. Okay, so 50% hexazinum, one direction. Not much difference between um, unmode and mode. Thirty percent one direction. And you're starting to even in the mode side, you're starting to see a little bit of activity. <clears throat> and then 60% one direction here. Looks pretty good on both the mode and non-mode.
This is hexazinone. So now I'm standing in 50% hexazinone wipe two directions. Non mode and mode behind me. Then we go to 30% two directions and then 60%. Thirty percent's right here. Two directions. Not much difference again. Having some issues. <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> On the, and I and I understand the amount that's there to start with is going to affect it. But look, do you have an idea like on a sixty or seventy percent hexazinone white twice? something that looks like that what a cost per acre is going to be uh, yeah so he's asking about cost per acre on something that looks like this at 60 percent what the cost would be and that's something i haven't tried to figure out uh, because your output can change from person to person right just on material side yeah on material i should be able to do that real quick and i'll have to do it when we get back up there but yeah i can do that Okay. Any other questions? How detrimental is it to the bahia grass if you get white that's free? What's the hexazinone or glyphosate? Either one. So if I sprayed at normal use rates, at two quarts per acre with hexazinone, you're not going to have that much injury. On bahia. Yeah. But you'd take care of the rest of the wheat. Possibly. I bet even these weeds would be here, even if I broadcast spray them. With, with the hexazinone. Because they came up after They you. came up after I killed the smut grass. If we had time, I'd ride you guys, but it'd be way too rough. Right next door is the rainfall study that we did, did last year. And if you were able to drive down through it, because we started in the beginning of May, and as you drive that way, you start to see less and less and less smut grass. And then towards the end, you start to see smut grass pick back up again. Wetter. <clears throat> Wetter, and then got towards the end of the growing season. So even out there, we have a lot of dog fennel, a lot of goat weed, kogan grass coming into those plots. So we're, like I said, we're trading one weed problem for another. When you use the glyphosate on the, on the wiper, do you use any kind of surfactant with it? Okay, when I'm using glyphosate in the wiper, am I using a surfactant with it? I am not, because we're such a high concentration. Now, if we were down to half percent or one percent, then I'd say, yeah, maybe. But 17 and a half or greater, I don't think we need it. <laughs> not with their built-in surfactant. Yeah, I'd like standing in this. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody. <laughs> All right. You think you're better off to spray it or wipe it? Are you better off to spray it or wipe it? As long as you use the right concentrate. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that yet. Um, I think it's really up to the user at this point. I've been overwhelmingly shocked on how well the Velpars worked in the wipe. I didn't think it had any bearing whatsoever. But I had a grower in Okeechobee tell me that he had been using glyphosate for years and switched to Velpar on a whim. And he said he wished he would had all that time and money back that he spent on glyphosate in the wiper for smite grass. I don't know. Um, he's continuing to use the, the Velpar too. So it seems to be working pretty well for him. You can't graze it right after the Velpar. With Velpar or any of those products, tight hexazinone or even Velosa, there's no grazing restriction. Oh, that's changed. Hey, that's yeah. changed. There's a 38-day haying restriction, but not grazing. I like hating dairy cows. You got a grazing restriction. Thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, they've changed. It. Yeah. I remember after that. Okay. Used to, you could. How how fast? Did you how fast was I running? Good question. So I was driving about three miles an hour. So pretty slow. But with our with these pull behind wipers, when we got into a thick clump or thick, real thick area, bass, um, it would actually stop the roller. And 
until those wheels started rolling again. So it, it was kind of treacherous sometimes. But the three point hitch one's better. Three point hitch that? one doesn't do that because you can adjust it on the go. You go the same speed or? Dennis, you guys, have you, what speed are you going with the three point hitch wiper? About four. Yeah. Okay. So Imagine a lot of your limited factors how rough the ground is. Right. <laughs> the limits, is the, 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 the ground roughness, or yeah. That, or getting it wiped mm -hmm. over. I think probably both. Mm -hmm. How many acres do you think you get? Like if you had a 10 gallon tank, how many acres do you think you could wipe? <laughs> so that's one of the questions I was asked a little bit ago too. And that's going to vary so much depending on who's running the wiper and how thick of an infestation you have. Um, I've done 30 acres with 10 gallons, which is pretty amazing, but I didn't have that much sweat grass there either. So it really depends. <coughs> so there were times, we always mixed five gallons when we did this, when we did these studies. And sometimes we'd end up with a gallon left over, and other times we'd end up with two and a half gallons left over. So it just really depended on how dense those plots were. And I could figure that up real quick when we get back, based on what our area was. On a, on a Velpar, Texas, on, on a rainfall, is it, you think it's as important to have it on the wiper as it is on a broadcast spray? Well, then okay, do we need rainfall whether we wipe it or broadcast spray, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think we do. Based on what we've seen so far, I don't have anything to back that up with, but I sure think we do. I think there's just enough evidence that if you spray Valpar and don't have rainfall, it doesn't work. So I'm, my guess is that you'll burn the tips, but you may not kill the whole root without the rainfall. I'm in it again. You're still getting close. Do right. you have enough ground moisture to where you don't need the rainfall? If you're spraying it, maybe not wiping it because you're going to wash the load at all. Mm -hmm. spraying it. Can you have enough ground moisture if you're spraying it and not need the rainfall? That's something we've tried to answer too, and we haven't been able to come up with a real answer at this point. We've looked at soil moisture data over the last two years and really couldn't find any correlation. It was mo always more highly correlated with rainfall. Rain, so you think you think rainfall is better? Yeah.